Hello. Uh, I'd like to present some basic information about statistics, and I'm going to use toying courses and uh, dice throwing as examples to illustrate these principles. Before I do, let me give some background information. Let's imagine that we have a population distribution, population distribution, like the one shown below. Uh, we have a number on the ordinate and length on the axis. So this, this could be, let's just imagine it's the length of fish in a lake. And uh, they could be one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, and six inches. Some nondescript distribution. Um, for this population distribution, uh, there will be a mean, mu sub x. And the mean for this particular one is 3.21. I computed it using Excel. There will be a standard deviation, sigma sub x for the population distribution. In this case, it actually is uh, 1.75. Now, suppose we, uh, we, might, we, we might not really know what the distribution is, the population distribution, but we might investigate it by taking samples out of the lake. And uh, let's suppose we take them two at a time or three samples, or four samples. Let's, let's, let's start with two. Suppose we take two samples out of the lake, we measure the length of the fish, we take the average, divide by two to get the average. We do this over and over and over again, almost an infinite number of times. We will get, and we plot the averages or the means, uh, we will get a distribution, a sample distribution of these means. And uh, if we do this for n equal 2, uh, our distribution will have an average. And um, that average, is, as long as we do it a large number of times, the average of the, of, the, of the sample distribution will equal the average of the population distribution. Let's re say we repeat it taking three samples at a time over and over again, getting the average of the, of the fish over and over again. Uh, again, uh, if we plot the sample distribution for n equal 3, uh, the average for the sample distribution will be the average for the mean. But uh, it will be a narrower distribution because we took 3 instead of 2. And then we do it for 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. Do it over and over again for n equal 10, let's say, and get our population distribution. We should find, first of all, that the Standard deviation of the population distribution, that's this quantity here, is equal to the standard, the, the standard deviation of the sample distribution should equal the standard di distribution of the population distribution divided by the square root of n. So the larger n is, when we take 10 samples, our standard deviation of the sample distribution will be narrower than if we took an n of 2, all right? It will get progressively narrower. We should also find that if we look at the sample distribution, if n is large enough, 5 or 10, we should find that the sample distribution will start to look like a bell-shaped curve, like a normal distribution or a Gaussian. Same thing, all right? And I'm going to illustrate that with the coins and with dice, dice first and then coins. Uh, before I leave this section of the, of the uh, presentation, I would like to draw your attention to two nice websites uh, on statistics that are shown here. Okay, now we're going to illustrate the principles that I just talked about uh, using dice first and then coin tosses. Let's take a population of dice and the population has a thousand ones, a thousand twos, a thousand threes, a thousand fours, a thousand fives, and a thousand sixes. So the probability is equal for all of them. This is the probability distribution as a XY plot, and here it is as a histogram. This is our population. This is our population distribution. It's obviously not a normal distribution. And now, let's suppose we sample that population. First, we sample it two at a time, which we should find if we do this an infinite number of times. 
we take two dice out, sum them up, divide by two to get an average, we should find that our probability distribution our, our, for our sample distribution as opposed to our population distribution shown here, this is our sample distribution, is a curve like this. This is our sample distribution as a XY plot and as a histogram. It's obviously not a normal distribution. We can figure out the average of these um, sample dis uh, of the sample distribution, and it's the same as the average of the population distribution. Here's the population distribution average. There's the sample distribution average. We can figure the standard deviation of our distribution. It's smaller than the standard deviation of our sample. But if we take the sample, the, the, it's smaller than a population distribution. If we take the population distribution, standard deviation, and divide by the square root of 2, because we use two dice, we will get the sample distribution, standard deviation. Now, if we go and do three dice at a time, I mean, here's a normal probability to get these. It's very straightforward. I'm not going to go into that. But if you do three dice, taking samples of three dice, add the three dice up, divide by three, we'll get the sample, do it over and over, infinite number of times, plot the distribution. This is theoretically what you should get. This is our probability distribution uh, for our sample distribution. You can see it's starting to approach a bell-shaped curve. The average for this is again 3.5, the same as our population distribution. The standard deviation is smaller than it was for n equal 2. And the relationship also holds that the standard deviation for our sample distribution is equal to the standard deviation for our population distribution divided by the square root of 3. When we go to 4, it looks more bell-shaped. The same average. The standard deviation gets smaller, narrower. And we take, we see that the relationship still holds, that the standard deviation for our sample is equal to the standard deviation for our population divided by the square root of 4. And it's looking more like a bell-shaped curve with 5 even more. And that's as far as I went. So the relationships that I talked about previously hold. The standard deviation for the sample distribution is equal to the standard deviation for the population distribution that we're sampling divided by the square root of n, where n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And as n gets larger, we get more and more of a bell-shaped curve or a normal distribution. Now let's go and see what happens with dice. Let's say we have a population of, uh, not dice, coins. A population of coins, a large population of coins. Half of them are up, heads, half are tails. Let's call tails zero, heads one. This is what our population distribution looks like, an equal number of heads and tails. So we have this large population distribution with an equal number of heads and tails. And let's suppose we sample that first two at a time, two coins at a time. If it's heads, we give it a 1. If it's tails, we give it a 0. Add the two numbers together, divide by 2. And this is what our probability distribution for the sample is. Okay. Now, the reason that there's more 0.5s, 0.5 would correspond to one head and one tail, is because there's two arrangements that give you heads, one head and one tails, head tails and tails head. There's only one that gives you two heads, heads heads and only one that gives you two tails, tails, tails. But again, uh, the average for our, and again, we're doing this an infinite number of times to get this distribution. This is the theoretical curve, which, which we, can, we can do statistically, um, probability, using probability. The average for our sample distribution is the average for our population distribution. The standard deviation for our population, our, our sample distribution is smaller than the population for our, it's smaller than the standard deviation for our population distribution. And the relationships all, still holds. If we take the population distribution 
standard deviation divided by the square root of 2, we get the standard deviation for the sample distribution. Now this doesn't look normal yet, but as we go to higher and higher number of coins, three coins, take the three coins out, give them a zero if it's a one, and a one if it's a zero if it's a tails, and one if it's a heads, and uh, get the average, and look at, plot the distribution, straightforward statistics to get these probability distributions. In, in practice, you would do it an infinite number of times to get your ex experimental as sample distribution, but you can get it theoretically using probability. And the same relationship holds. Our, norm, our, our standard deviation gets narrower for 3 compared to 2, and the, the relationships that I talked about previously hold. With 4 coins, it gets narrower yet. The same relationship holds. It gets more bell-shaped. With 5, it's better, more bell-shaped yet. And a narrower distribution with 6. And I've done up to 10. And 10 really does look like a bell-shaped curve. So again, I'm looking at the arrangements that we could possibly get. All tails. All heads. There's only one way to get all tails. There's only one way to get all heads. But uh, if you had one head and the rest tails, there's 10 ways of doing that. And straightforward probability theory tells you the number of arrangements that you would get. And we take the total and we divide by the number of coins and we get the value. The average is the same as it was for our population distribution, 0.5. But the standard deviation is quite narrow, 0.1581, whereas it's 0.5. And if we take the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of 10, we get the standard deviation of the sample. So again, this illustrates something called the central limit theorem, that as our sampling size gets larger, no matter what the shape of our original distribution, our original population distribution, the sample distribution will approach a bell-shaped curve, a normal distribution, a Gaussian, same thing. Uh, so this is a, a good way to illustrate the central theorem, limit theorem of statistics. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, this uh, increases your, your knowledge of statistics and you find it useful. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.